perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Father, for this great one. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. I just want to welcome us one more time to a great day in God's presence. And we're going to be looking at a team this morning that says, understanding the reality of spiritual things, which has to do with the new birth. All right. And we're going to be taking it through Hosea, the book of Hosea, talking about God's charge against Israel and understanding the spiritual implication and what the new birth is. All right. Uh, basically, when you look at the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, there was something that was really awesome that I love in that scripture in verse 9. He said, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? You know, I, I remember last week when we, you know, this week, sorry, on Monday when we had the 9th of heaven prayer, uh, there was something I said. I said, Jesus lived beyond wet with spoken words. You know, a lot of people will say, How can these things be? How can these things be possible? But today, you're going to see the spiritual implication of what the new birth is all about. And believe me, a lot of people will stand out and look at themselves again and say, Am I born again? Or my father led me into church and I thought I was born again. And this is exactly what we're going to see. And again, most people were baptized when they were small. So they felt because they were baptized, they were already born or they're already born again. But the Bible made us understand that he that professed Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior is born into the kingdom of God. Now, let's look at the book of Hosea verse 4. Because Jesus charged the people of Israel. And there was something Jesus said there in verse 6, in Hosea 4 verse 6. He said, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. All right. Now, the question is, why did he say so? And this is what we want to see now. In Hosea 4, 1b, the Bible said there is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. So there is no truth, there is no mercy, there is no knowledge of God in the land. And this is what we must understand. He said these people were not true to their words. So they were, they were not true to the words. We talk about the profession of God as their father. All right. We, he said they were not faithful to their trust no truth of grace in them there was no truth of worship with respect to God so basically what they were doing was mainly religion and superstition and that is exactly what we're going to see the Bible said in that Hosea 4 he said there were lots of sacrifices but there was no mercy and that's why when you leave Hosea 4 and get to Hosea 6 verse 6 he says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the sacrifice the Bible speaks about in the book of Psalm 51 verse 17 is of a contrite heart and a broken spirit. The Bible says, I will not despise. And this is exactly what we must understand. And again, when you look at our society today, when it comes to thanksgiving, we see a lot of people, they bring a lot of gifts, you know, a lot of stuff to the vineyard, to the house of the Lord. But the Bible says here, it said, but there was no mercy. So which is a big key when we talk about spiritual understanding of the new birth. All right. He said, there was no spiritual saving knowing of God and communion with him. And they had not the true love to God. And that's why the scripture says we must love God above all things. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave. So, what is the reason basically why we come to Jesus when we talk about the new birth? Someone said to me, said, do you know why I came out during the altar call? He said, because I just wanted you to touch my head. And this is not being born again. And this is what we will see again. Now, in verse 4, in Hosea 4 verse 4, he said, but yet they say, let not the scribe teach me, nor the prophet reprove. So there were absolute rebellion that was going on. They were not willing to understand the truth. And this is why 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit. And that's why Nicodemus said there, he said, and Nicodemus answered, how can these things be? So when we make people understand that when you trust with the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, he will direct your path. They said, what is this guy talking about? He 
said they contended with their teachers. These people are the ten tribes of Israel who were nationally and nominally, nominally the people of God. They were so by what? They profess God as their king. And you know basically our coming to Jesus when you talk about new bed is profession of our faith. But there is something that happens more than profession of faith. And look at what he said. He said, yet they profess to worship God in their idols. These people were ignorant of God, his mind, and the will and worship and without fear and reverence to him. So this resulted basically in the abomination that they run into. So a man who is born again and does not have the knowledge of God's word has never taken his Bible from January to date, does not have an understanding, the patience or the fruit and the gift of the Holy Spirit to wait on God, then that person is never born again. And this is what we must understand. Like I said before, a lot of people were baptized when they were small. A lot of people were sent to church. They thought they were born again, but they profess uh, 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 Jesus not because they love him, but because they what they want to gain from him. When you go further there, he said, "Those people, they perish through the default of false priests in performing their office, which led them into superstition and idolatry." So the question is, what is superstition? It is reverence for the supernatural that has to do with zodiac sign. Someone wants to get married. He said, this person is sanguine and I am Aries. So because he is sanguine, I am Aries. That means we can get married. This is not the word of God. These are all superstition. People believe in magic. People believe in sorcery. People believe in putting their name in some application. And those things will tell you who you are. But these are all superstition. And the Bible said there, he said the people perish through the default of the priest in performing their offices because they fail to tell the people the truth and one thing that we must understand when it comes to new birth when you are misled both the one who misled you and you that is being misled by the person both of you will pay the consequence and this is what the new birth is all about now when you go to Romans 8 verse 11 it gave us a clearer view to deviate from superstition, delusion, and illusion of basically thinking what the new bed is, which basically we don't understand. He said they profess being in their idols and they worship the king of glory in profession, but there was idolatry. And again, when you look at idolatry, it's basically not talking about most of the time idol. Yes, you worship idol. Again, you know we can worship ourselves. We can worship our cars. We can worship our wives. We can even worship our doll, our, our, our jobs. So anything that you put above God becomes an idol. And this becomes a question in the life of a believer. In Romans 8 verse 11, look at what the scripture said here. And I want you to look at yourself and ponder about this scripture here today. He said, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. And that's why Jesus said, he that is born of the flesh is of the flesh, but he that is born of the spirit is of the spirit. So when you are born of the spirit, there is no way you can operate under the flesh. He said, because of the spirit who lives in where? In you, this is the scripture. Pay attention to this part of it. He said, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. And here there is a transformation into the kingdom of God. And this is exactly what Jesus was trying to illustrate to Nicodemus. But it wasn't making any sense to him. And the Bible made me understand in John 6, 63, he said, it is the spirit that quickened it. He said, the flesh profited nothing. And when you look at Romans 8 verse 11 there, he said, because of his spirit who lives in us. So we no longer operate by the dimension of the flesh. And that is why Ephesians 3.16 said, we derive strength from his spirit and not by works. So there is no way you can derive strength from your intellect. This is the reason why people who derive strength from their intellect fall into depression as easy as possible. And this is why when you look at what he told to Nicodemus, he said, but you are a teacher of the law. So it is not enough for you to be a teacher. It is not enough for you to be a believer. 
It is not enough for you to be a Christian, but you must be born of water and spirit. And this is what the scripture says. And that is the only way you can derive strength and be filled with the fruit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your understanding. And there's something I love about the scripture. It says, acknowledge him in all. It didn't say some. In all your ways and he will direct your path. And this is exactly what Nicodemus did not understand. The possibilities of this. But I love King Solomon. When you go further in Proverbs 30 verse 5. He said, every word of God is pure and true. And this is the power of his word. So, Brother David saw it. He rejoiced at the word of God in Psalm 3 verse 3. He said, but thou, O Lord, art a shade for me, the glory and lifter of my head. So as a believer, can we profess what David just professed now? That said, be thou, O Lord, at my shade for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. If we have this understanding of the scripture, then we will rejoice when we fall into diverse temptation. Then we can speak things and things will come to reality out of things that is not seen. And this is why Jesus lived a very wealthy life with the spoken word of God because he was a carrier of God's spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And this brings us to the scene of today that talks about the new birth. So the question is, are you born again? This is a big question we need to ask ourselves this morning. In John 3, 9 to 11. All right, I want us to read the scripture. John 3, 9 to 11. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Hold on. I love that one. It's powerful there. Now, in that verse 11, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know, and testify that we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. You cannot have new birth and there is no witness of the birth of Christ in you. It is not possible. And this is what we must understand. So that's why Nicodemus couldn't comprehend what new birth is all about. So he thought about being a teacher of the law, reading the scripture and having the, uh, 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 the, 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 what they call it, the physical knowledge of God's word is a new birth. No. Now when you go to verse 3, in then John 3 verse 3, look at what he said. Unless a man is born again, and there is something that I want you to hold on to this morning. It's very key. He said he cannot see the kingdom of God. So there is being born again, new birth, that talk about the kingdom of God. If you remember what I said about deliverance, I said it is a movement from one kingdom to another. And that's why 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, You are a new creature. All things are passed away. You are not living in the newness of Christ. And this talks about a movement in the kingdom. So he's saying here that unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now the question is, what is the kingdom of God? Now the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power and authority. And that's why I said, Jesus lived beyond words with the spoken words because he had power and authority in his hands. In Romans 14 verse 17, describes the kingdom of God to be righteousness, peace, joy, in what? In the Holy Ghost. And that's why Ephesians 3.16 says you must derive strength from the Holy Ghost. So when you are in the kingdom of God, the Bible said we are now the, righteous of, the righteousness of God through, where? through Christ Jesus. And again, if you look at the peace, the Bible says Jesus is the Prince of Peace. In Hebrew 12 verse 14, he said, follow peace with all men. Without holiness, you cannot see that kingdom. And this is the word of God. So a man who is born again is a peaceful man. And this is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And he talks about joy. And when you look at Isaiah 12 verse 3, he said, with joy, you will draw waters from the wares of salvation. And that's why the psalmist said, I rejoice at that word because the word of God is a great treasure to me in Psalm 119162. And this is the word of God. So in that kingdom, there is righteousness, there is peace, there is joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you look at your life today, do you have this quality as a new birth in Christ in your life? And this is the question you need to ask yourself. And this is why when you are not operating in this kingdom, you begin to work very hard. And we're going to see the difference between working smart in the spirit and working hard as a believer. Praise the Lord. And this brings me to 
Abraham and Lazarus, they both made heaven. They enjoyed heaven. But one was richer than one because of knowledge and obedience. In the kingdom, we work smart and not hard, which has to do with works. And this is why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added. But people said, No, I have to seek intellectual knowledge. I have to seek God first. So anything you make as idol before God, look at what God told the people. That's why I read the scripture in Osiah. He said they profess God with their idol. So there is no way you can make anything above God and you talk about being born again. Then it means you've not entered into the kingdom. All right. Now, when you go further, basically, it says, We are smart in the life of faith. We are smart in the life of the world and a fruitful life. And that's why I can say, I command that thing to live and that thing will live because I have power in me. And that is the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is what? Power and authority. And that's why Sam understood. But David said, he that dwells in that kingdom abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, a thousand will fall at the side, ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come near thee. And this is the kingdom of God. Now, when you go further a little bit, he said, adoption of our spirits, making us heads with God, join heads with Christ, admitted into the secret place of God is a smart life of faith. Because the one who is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. You've been delivered out of darkness into the light of God. And the Bible says you are light. He said you should shine so that men will glorify the God that you serve. Your life must replicate the king of glory at all time. And this is the reality, the spiritual things that talks about the new birth. When you go further there, it says seeing God's kingdom is an intellectual vision of the invisible divine reality through the aid and enlightenment of God's spirit. If you don't have the spirit of God, there is no enlightenment, there is no way you can understand the word of God. I want to tell you one truth. There was a time when I got baptized. I was a good boy like Cornelius. You know, I thought I'd give my life to Jesus. So I started serving God and I was fervent in knowing God, desiring to know him. And I got to understand that it's far more than what we think. So I was led by the Holy Spirit to go to the man of God. I told him then I was working in the church. I was very committed to the church. I said, sir, I want to give my life to Christ. He looked at me. He said, ah, ah, no. He said, but you're already born again. You are a worker. I can see your dedication. I said, sir, you do not understand. I've been studying the scripture. I've never experienced life in it. Sir, I want to be born again, to be born of the spirit. So when I confessed Jesus like Nicodemus, because I had to sneak, I couldn't come out on the altar call, you know. So I had to sneak like Nicodemus and I went to him and I dedicated my life to Jesus. Believe me, immediately I did that. I felt the presence of God like never before. The scriptures were open to me. Those things that seem impossible became possible for me from there henceforth. Everything I speak come to reality except it is out of the will of God. And this is what we call new birth. There must be an encounter. You must have seen that glory of God for you to express that glory. Because what you've not seen, you can never express so a lot of people have never come to the knowledge of the truth. They came out because they want the pastor to touch their head. They came out because the pastor said, if you come out, your life will never remain the same and the Lord will lift you up. And because they are trusting God for a job, they are trusting God for a life partner, they came out based on that. Jesus did not give his son because of what he wants to get from us. It was because of an unconditional love for us. The Bible says the word of God convicts us. The word of God does not trick us into salvation. And this is the difference. And look at what he said there about the prophet. He said, let me go to that place again. He said, these people were ignorant of God, his mind and will and worship without fear and reverence to him. He said, the people perished through the default of false priests because they were not told what the new birth, the spiritual reality and implication of what the new birth is. I was listening to a great man of God. He said, you may be a pastor, you may be a believer, but you are not born again. It is very possible. 
Because like I said, most of us were baptized when we were small. I remember when I was very small, my mom, you know, they had to push me. You have to do baptism. You have to do this. So I thought at that time I was already born again, but I never knew it was, it was more than baptism. It is professing Jesus and having an encounter and communion with the king of glory. There will be a shift in your life. You will see that desire to seek for God. You cannot be born again and people will keep begging you to love God. No, you were never born again before. And this is what we must understand. And this is what amazed Nicodemus. He said, how can these things be? Because at that time he was baptized. But he couldn't comprehend that. How can this actually be for a man to burn of water and spring that speaks about purity and power? Thank you, Jesus. In John 3 verse 5, he said, Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said, it is impossible to see and not have it. There is no way you can see and not have it. And this is what the scripture is saying. It said, what we see in the light of the spirit, you absorb and that is what you possess. So if you have not experienced power, there is no way you can possess and express that power that you have. And this is the reason why when you notice people, when they go to sorcerers and they give them some whatever, they tell them, when you take this stuff, all right, when someone shoots you, the gun is not going to come into your right. And before they do that, you will notice that the sorcerer will test the gun on himself. So when he shoots himself, you realize that the gun doesn't penetrate. That gives you confidence to go there and do whatever you want to do. And this is what we call an experience. If you've never experienced that life in the spirit, believe me, there is no way you can express and possess what you have. And this is the difficulty that we find among believers. And this is why Jesus said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. He said they perish by the default of the priests because of their offices. The people were not taught the truth. John 16, 24. He said, ask and you should receive that your joy may be full. Like I said, he said, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You cannot be a carrier of God's spirit and your joy is half. It's not possible. He said, what we see as believers in the kingdom of God provokes our worship in the spirit. And this is why when you go to our gathering today, someone says, Father, we just give you all the praise. Somebody is still sitting down. You have to start telling them, bro, come on. You don't know that God loves you. You don't know that he died. Stand up wherever you are. You are trying to convince them. You don't convince people of what they know. This is the truth. And that's why when you see a true believer, he said, that which was worship me in spirit and in truth. And that's why when you begin to lift the name of God up, you see them begin to recount the good deeds of the king of glory. They begin to remember when they were born, how God saved them from the accident, how God gave them life, how God gave them power. As they begin to remember, you see them worship God in air and reverence. But when you don't have an encounter in the spirit, when somebody says, let's begin to lift him up, you are looking at the person because you do not understand what the person is saying. You must have the spiritual reality of things that has to do in your bed for you to be able to worship the king of glory. So a man who does not have an expression of worship cannot live in dominion as a child of God. And this is why believers suffer. And I keep telling the youth, when I see believers suffer, he pains me a lot. And when he pains me, I begin to think of God. This is why I know how, if I feel this way, how is God feeling when he knows that he has imputed in power in believers. And that's why he said, they rebel against this teacher. They didn't want to be taught the truth. And this is the spiritual truth. A lot of people don't want to hear this. But when you speak the truth, when you begin to talk about prayers, miracles, they are so excited. But we forget that those things cannot take us to heaven. And in times of danger, they cannot help us. In Mark 16 verse 15, look at what he said here. A man who is a carrier of God's spirit. Please pay attention to this. He said, go ye into the world and preach to every creature. And I want you to pay attention. I'm going to give you some scenarios of those who had new birth and who was filled with the Holy Spirit. So before you come and say the Lord said or the Holy Spirit led me, you must have a knowledge of the scripture I want to speak to you right now. 
He said, go into the world and preach to every creature. He said, and these signs shall follow them that what? Believed. He didn't say the signs shall follow bishops, pastors, or popes. Anyone who believe, as long as you believe, he said, these signs shall follow you and I'm going to prove it. He said, you will cast out devils. So how come when I call Babalawo, you begin to fret? I remember one time where I live in my country, you know, there is one juju they call uh, Ayelala. And some people went to steal. The government told them they should return what they stole from the market. Nobody listened. So they had to bring this God to the center of the city and they started swearing. Do you know that they recovered everything that they stole? All right. But the question now is people are afraid of deities. But they are not afraid of the one that created the deities. You have the power to cast that devils. All right. He said they shall speak in new tongues. All right. They shall take up serpents in their hands. I remember someone. He said they shall drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. A man of God had an encounter with armed robbers. And they asked him for money. He said he doesn't have. They said you know what? You've been preaching holiness. You've been preaching against us. Today this mouth that they're using to preach. We're going to burn it. So they brought an acid. They told him to drink it. The man understand the kingdom that he's from. He told the arm robbers, he said, thank you for the juice that you've given me the water. And as he drank it, he was satisfied. The people gave their life to Jesus. So the question is, who are these? He said, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in the name of Jesus. So the question is, who are these? I said it before. He said, those who believe and that we can see in John 1 12 he said as many that receive he gave them power to become the sons of God and this is the word of God Acts 28 I want to prove this scripture to you Paul was on the land of Malta we know the story when he had an encounter with the serpent now look at what the scripture said he said you will take off serpent all right and not it shall harm you now look at what happened there in verse 6b. He said, but when they had waited a long time, they thought when the snake beat him, he was going to swell up and die. He said, when they waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, he said, they changed their mind and decided he was a God and that was who he is because in John 10, 34, he said, for ye are gods. In Psalm 82, verse 6, he said, for ye are gods. And that was the representation of his personality in the kingdom of God. So he was able to take up the serpent. He said there was no harm. And the people changed their mind and they decided he was a God. So who is that man that will come and threaten you to tell you you will lose your job? I was looking at someone, he was telling me, ah, that guy have the power to sack you. I said, no, he does not have the power to sack me. The truth is, I am doing my job. When God says it's enough, that is when he can do it. But if God has not said so, no man can do that. And that is the power of God. In Acts 8, 6 to 8, Acts 8, 6 to 8, Philip performed miracle and there was great joy in the city. And these were deacons. They were in popes, they were in bishops. He said there was great joy in the city because of the miracle he performed. And how did he do it? He said because of the spirit of God upon his life. Thank you Jesus. In Acts 4 verse 33. The Bible says. And with great power. The apostles witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. He didn't say some. So as many that receive and believe, he gave them power, adoption of the spirit, make us heirs with God and join heirs with Christ. So in his kingdom, we have the power and authority to speak to that thing and that thing comes to reality. And I've come to you with good news. If you are born again and you still run from miracles to another looking for miracles that is already invested in you, it means you don't know who you are. And this is what Osiah said to you. That you perish because of lack of knowledge. Thank you Jesus. I was telling someone. I said. I want to speak the word of God upon your life. He was looking at me. He was telling me. Pastor tell me about myself. Say this. Say that. I said I don't need to. 
Of what difference will it make if I tell you that I want to go into your city room, I can see your chair. That beside your chair, there is a TV. At what advantage? But I said, there is something I will do to you now. I will speak the word of God upon your life and you will see transformation. And as the word of God come, it's a power ensue. That is the power of God's word. In new birth, there is a transformation, heart change, purifying and cleansing. All things are passed away. You're living in the newness into the kingdom of God. So there must be a heart change. If you are born again, you are still carrying the old heart, then there is something wrong with you. In Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, as we're going towards the rounding up, in Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, listen to the scripture here. It says, sprinkle my clear water and you shall be clean. Except a man is born of water and spirit. It is not baptism. It talks about a cleansing by Jesus and God himself. In Jeremiah 4 verse 14, it says, wash your heart from evil that you may be saved. By God alone. And this is the word of God. In Matthew 9 verse 17. I love the scripture here. It said. And no one puts new wine into old wine skin. For the old skin. Burst from the pressure. It raised the skin. You cannot leave. The old ways and be in the new ways. You are still lukewarm. That's why the scripture in Revelation 3 19 says. If you are lukewarm. It said I will reject you. He said, be zealous. And there was something he said there. Repent. You cannot have the word of God. You say you're born again and you're still living your old life. No. Now, the question is, what is new wine? Let's look at new wine. We're going to look at new wine and old wine. Then we will round up. What is new wine? New wine is love and favor of God. That is neat and clean. Free from hypocrisy. It has a reviving effect pleasant taste in reviving drooping spirit comforting distressed minds you cannot be born again and you are born into the kingdom of God and your life is bringing people to depression, no it's a comforting depressed mind and refreshing weary persons so when your life starts complicating other believers then there is a, something wrong with your salvation what is old wine? He says, zealous attachment to the traditions of the land. We still believe in the traditions of the land. He says, setting upon old principles of self-righteousness. And old man is still predominant in your life. And that's what I said in Revelation 3, from verse 17 to 19. He said, you cannot be lukewarm. You cannot be in your old self. You cannot be in your new self. The Lord said, I will just reject you. So he spoke. He said, come on, be zealous and repent. And this is the word of God. In John 3 verse 8. In John 3 verse 8. It says, The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it. But can't tell where it comes from. And where it goes. He says, So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. It's something you cannot explain and comprehend. It is powerful and irresistible. There is no withstanding of it. It throws down Satan's strongholds demolishes the fortification of sin and the corruption of man's heart. So when you have a wind blows, you know when you talk about tornado. You cannot have such a wind and you are still standing, bro. It's not possible. We know the power in the wind. But the question is, you feel it, but you don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. And this is the power of the Spirit of God upon man. And this is what the natural man cannot comprehend. In conclusion, in John 19, 31 to 40, the Bible says in the beginning, it said Nicodemus came to Jesus at night to find out about how can one enter into that kingdom. He said, because these signs that you perform, I know that you are from God. Now, in John 19, verse 13, and the Bible makes us understand that Nicodemus left. He said, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of my and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Now, there is another person who was, at that time, they were very rich. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they were both secret believers. At Jesus' death, they 
are no longer under condemnation. They have passed from hiding in darkness to coming into the light. So at that point in time, they had to come to light when they saw what Jesus said. He said, just as Moses raised up the serpent and people had restoration, he said, so will the Son of Man be lifted up and there will be restoration. As soon as Jesus died, he said, those things that were secret in the life of Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they came out in the open because it was irresistible and it was powerful. So you cannot have the power of God and you are still hiding. In your Facebook page, you cannot propagate the gospel. You cannot tell people that you are a believer. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to read John 3, 14 to 15. John then we will conclude. John 3, 14 to 15. John 3, 14 to 15. Yes. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Amen. And this is what Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had an encounter, and they had to come to the open to say, Jesus, you are Lord. I want to leave you with this. And by the grace of God, we're going to be doing this more when we are doing this season three of voicing to God's word. We're talking about what is generational causes. All right. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, Please, I want you to listen to this scripture. Because people always say, generational cause is following me. My life is full with generational cause. It is what my father did. It is what my mother did. Yes, I agree. But in new birth, when you confess Jesus, you have left that generation into a new generation. There is no way you can operate in the old generation. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I want to leave this with you before we pray. He said, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and causes. Now choose life so that you and your children shall live. So when you've given your life to Christ, what do you choose? Do you choose what the tradition says? Or you choose what the word of God is saying. This is a question I leave to you. Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you for your word today. Before we proceed this morning, look at your life. From everything that the Lord has spoken today, are you found guilty in all this? Look at your life. Was there a time you actually gave your life to Christ? Or you were just baptized or you came out because you wanted blessing do you actually desire to know him by loving him because he loved you look deeply into your head your heart and as you come to jesus today you will see the spirit of god hit you and there'll be change of life and heart lay your hands on your chest don't be shy if you cannot do it in the open any time you can do like Nicodemus but you need that encounter it is very necessary in a word like this say Jesus I come to you I profess you as my Lord and personal Savior I know that you died for me on the cross so that I will be saved say Lord God Almighty release your spirit mightily upon me because your word says, he that is born of water and spirit shall see the kingdom of God. Say, Lord, I thank you now because I know I now operate in your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, as I have placed my hands and as I have entered into this kingdom, Lord God, may I never look back. Like Lord's wife who looked back and he turned to pillar of salt. Say, Lord God, help me never to look back in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have prayed. We're going to pray in one prayer point. Someone is born again. A prophecy came. You drove your wife. A prophecy came. 
you hated your father and mother because you thought they bewitched you. They should see the glory of God upon your life and they will come to God. The Bible says the manifold wisdom of God will be not known by the church to principalities and power. Don't give the devil license to play you like ping pong. Yes. Spirit of the living God, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You are power and authority. Say, God, I derive strength in you. Manifest your presence in my life from my own. But the power in the name of Jesus. Salida, Patosco, Aida, Labrando, Sedaligade, Bando, Seta, Lagade. There was someone yesterday. He had an issue. And I called him. We were speaking. And right there, we spoke. Because at that point, he said, where two or three are gathered, you are in the kingdom of God. And where we were in the kingdom, I spoke life into him. And at that point, he had his testimony right there. He said, as many that receive, he has given them power. You have the power. Whatever you have God to do for you now, I want you to speak it from the depth of your heart. With the understanding that you have now, rid us yourself of bias. Genesis 18 verse 14. He says, is anything too hard for me to do? He said, according to the time of life, said I had a son. You will share your testimony according to the sign of life in the name of Jesus. That thing that you desire in your office, you need change. Speak it now. With power and authority, whatever you're trusting God for. For life partner, lay your hands in your womb. That barrenness is disappearing now in the name of Jesus. Speak life into it now. That recurrent sickness, put your hands there. He said, I have given you power to heal every sicknesses and diseases, to cast out demons, every power that is hovering around you because. You are a child of God by the power in the name of Jesus. He said, we shall cast out demons. I speak for upon your life now. Every demon that is watching your life. Today, I frustrate your plan. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My marriage is being delayed. The Lord said, there are certain things I want you to know. Because I want to use your marriage to glorify my name. Now, wherever you are, Ela Brando, Saika Ligde, Lebranda Seta Lagade, Matsa Eka Ligde. I see the power of God moving as you speak. Life now, now listen to me. If you are there and there is someone who is sick, go to that person, lay your hands upon that person now. You will see restoration now. Speak life into that person. Say, Lord, by the power in the name of Jesus, I command that sickness to leave this body now. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are. You have someone who is depressed. Lay your hands upon that person. Speak life upon that person now. You will see a transformation take its place because you operate in the kingdom of God. He said, In that kingdom, there is power and authority. Spirit of the living God, we bless your holy name. You are trusting God for a life partner. The Lord said you should rejoice always and begin to imagine your baby. Give him praise because he's too faithful to fail. Thank you, Father, for we bless your holy name. I cover our prayers with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I know that you have heard us. Glorify your name. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. Amen. If you believe that you're blessed, I want you to shout hallelujah and I also want you to like and share the page so that someone can also be blessed. Don't forget, today the youth will be meeting at huh? ah, the sisters will be meeting today sorry, at, at 7.30 alright, the sisters will be meeting today, please I want us to come together so that we can pray and share, alright. 
And also, the Unstoppable Generation will be having uh, the season of prayer starting from today by 4 o'clock, right? And Dominion Sanctuary will have a section of prayer from 6 to 6.30. I want us to join in this prayer. The Lord will lift you up in the name of Jesus. And again, we'll be having season 3 of our voice into God's word. And this time is, what is generational cause? All right, and we're going to be breaking every generational cause by the name of Jesus. And by the 12 o'clock, our sad group will be online. I want you to hook on. Every Monday is our Bible study, promised to be super awesome. And again, next week is our Christmas service, all right?